Hey guys, this is Gabriel Lorenzi, creator of the blog Grupo Dicas, one of the biggest travel blogs in the world. And today, I am here to tell you what to do in Venice. What are the best tours? What are the must-see sites? What are the main tips you need to know? And finally, everything for you to enjoy your trip to Venice to the fullest. So this will be quick tips, useful and with no fuss. So guys, don't forget to give us the like, subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot. And that's it, buckle up! Well, Venice is one of the most different destinations in the world, it was one of the places that impressed us the most because it's very different from everything we have ever seen. It's known for its rivers and canals, so when you get there you will notice that there are practically no cars in this tourist area, it's a city cut by rivers, by canals, full of bridges and narrow streets, so it has its own charm and its own identity. So it's a spectacular city and we are going to talk here about the things you need to do there to enjoy all this culture in all this history of Venice. One thing that helps a lot before starting the list is to talk about where to stay. Guys, Venice is not a, such a big city, the city is big but the tourist part is very small so you need to be centralized very close to the tourist attractions. The area we recommend without getting bogged down and getting to the point is San Marco. That is where you will find San Marco Square, San Marco Cathedral and it's close to all the sites that we'll mention here. So our tip is stay located there. We made the video about where to stay in Venice which explains very well well in the area but to help you there and to make it easier in the description of the video I'll leave a link to the map you look there for San Marco open it search for your hotel and there are located the best possible place to be close to all these points that we will start talking about it now so starting our list there's no way to leave out the first place the gondola ride it was the most enjoyable ride we ever took it's that super romantic boat that we are used to seeing in movies and it's very nice it lasts about 30 40 minutes our tip try to do this tour on the first day because you end up crossing the whole city so it's nice because you end up having a vision and a notion of where the main tourist attractions are where you are located and you get in the mood it's that very touristic venice tour that gives you a real feel for the city it's very cool and very nice so this is for sure a tour you can't miss is the signature of venice there are several points from where these gondola rides leave, you can get there on the spot and negotiate it personally with the gondolier, it's like a cab, each one has his own gondola, you arrive, negotiate and pay, but it's cheaper, more cheaper if you buy beforehand on the internet. So there are some websites that sell the tickets, I'll leave here in the description of the video one of them, which is the website that we use to buy all tickets and tours in Europe, especially in Italy. So there you have this gondola ride, you can buy, you arrive with your voucher, get on the boat and do the ride without any any problem you save a little bit of money and you don't have to stand in line to negotiate and to buy the ticket it's for sure easier and more comfortable to do Another very famous tourist attraction in Venice is the Rialto Bridge. It was the first bridge built to cross the General Venetian Canal. You will see on the map of Venice that the city is divided by a river. This river is called the Grand Canal, which is the Great Canal. And it's shaped kind of like an ass, so it divides the city in two parts. And this bridge was very important because of this fact it was the first bridge that connects these two areas. And this uh, bridge was very important for this reason. It was the first bridge connecting the areas. There are are people who tell you to have lunch there, eat there, we don't like it very much because we don't think the restaurants are that nice and the price of course is high because it's inside the main tourist attraction in Venice so our tip is get into one of the two parts of Venice, walk for two or three blocks and you will find much nicer, much cozier and cheaper restaurants. You can go to the bridge if you want to explore further but also probably when you are moving around with the boats, with the gondola, with the vaporetos which for those who don't know vaporetos are like cabs but they are boats because in Venice there's no car so to get to your hotel to get from the airport to the train station or from where you leave the car to your hotel to the places you have to use the Vaporetos so they travel along the Grand Canal and the rivers that cut through the city of Venice so you'll probably pass by it at some point or even at several points during your trip so uh, take pictures of it for sure uh, and you will not lack on your trip it's very good 
and it's still about the bridges another well-known tourist attraction there is the bridge of size it's a bridge that connects the palazzo ducale which is a building where old venetian prison used to be so this name came up there are some legends but they say that it's the bridge of size because it was the last side that the prisoners had before going to prison being locked there for the rest of their lives or for years and years so he ended up with the name uh, bridge of the size it's not such a beautiful bridge okay guys uh we went there with very high expectation it has nothing exuberant it's more for its history so don't go there with a high expectation but it's a nice walk and usually the gondola uh goes around there too so you can take a look anyway and now we are going to talk about the main tourist place in Venice, which is the most famous place and where you will spend probably the most time, which is exactly in that area that we told you to stay, which is the San Marco area. It uh, has this name because that's where San Marco Square is, or Piazza San Marco as the Venetians call it. It's the main tourist attraction in Venice. It's very nice because this square is very beautiful. You will take many pictures. It's a very big rectangular square and in the middle there are people walking around and around it. There are several restaurants with chairs. You can have a couch coffee, a gelato, lunch or dinner there and there is a gigantic tower which is called the clock tower. It's the Venice tower that was built a long time ago to announce the time, the mass times and everything. So it's a very nice contrast the size of this tower compared to the other beauties in the square. You will spend a good amount of time there so take an afternoon when it's very nice that there is the Basilica of San Marco which is very nice to go inside. Normally you don't need to buy an entrance ticket you can just walk in that are guided tours that you can pay to have a guide explain everything on this website that we left here below in the description of the video there is this guided tour and there is another tourist attraction that needs a ticket which is the palazzo ducale it's a very beautiful sensational place but there you have to buy the ticket but we think it's worth it because since you are there the beauties inside are very nice architecture the details are very beautiful indeed we thought uh, it was sensational and for sure very worthwhile for those who like the views and like different scenarios, a nice tip is to climb the Venetian Tower, which is also called St. Mark's Bell Tower. It's in the square too. It's that big tower and you can climb to the top. The problem is that the terrace is not that big and it doesn't fit many people. So there will probably be a long line to get up there. But the view is beautiful. If you want to take good pictures to see a place there, a uh, different view, invest a little time in it and money because you have to pay to get in. But it's cheap and super worth it. The view is amazing you can take very nice pictures and enjoy and guys real quick any questions you may have you can send it to us and we will help you plan your trip we'll be glad to help you with your doubts it's even easier send it to us on social networks at pylorenzi send us a direct message and we'll help you and follow us there we are always traveling around the world trying to show these travel tips in a very cool way in our routine with our little ones that are a blast so you can send us there and we'll be glad to help you with your questions and now an important tip for this San Marco Square, try to go very early and also at night because the scenery changes a lot during the day and at night and there are also two other issues, it gets very crowded from 10 in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, you will notice that uh, there are a lot of tourists there, it's very difficult to take a picture without someone nearby and there's another problem, that are pigeons, it's not that I hate pigeons but I have panic, I have a phobia of pigeons, I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I can't stand the place, I can't go into places that have birds so I ended up not going in there during the day because it was so tense uh, Lee went in took pictures and we went back at night and at night it was so wonderful uh, much more beautiful than during the day in my opinion at least and it turned out to be much nicer because there are not many tourists there you will see that empty square so the pictures at night are also very nice try to go there for coffee dinner a drink at night some wine we had wine there it was a very nice evening and very pleasant you have to uh, the bucket outside on the table it's very good it's cheap the wines there in Italy are very cheap now another tourist spot that's a little bit isolated there separate but very close to Venice is San Giorgio Maggiore it's very beautiful it's actually a church which is called San Giorgio Maggiore it's a project of the famous architect Andrea Palladium its architecture is very beautiful the details it has some windows so the church is very illuminated inside on sunny days it's even more beautiful because it's all illuminated by sunlight it has gigantic arches it has several flower arrangements and finally it's a very beautiful building and the nice thing is 
is that it's on a very small island which gives it a certain charm and it's very close to the square of San Marco so probably when you get there near the river uh, being in St. Mark's Square you will be able to see it so it's very nice it's very easy to get there you can take the Vaporito which is that water cab it's very cheap and it's not even five minutes together so it's a different place to do uh, to go and it's worth visiting and another two that people like to do a lot but it's not so much in venice uh, there you have to go a little bit further away but there are boats that take you straight there so it's close to it's the murano island it's a very beautiful and very old island there are many local people who live there and people live off murano which is a very beautiful stone so what we have most there are those pieces and decorative materials made of murano and people go there a lot to buy them people go there a lot to buy those who like home decoration have beautiful prices and the price is much cheaper than anywhere else in the world because because they are made there they really have this culture so it's a nice place if you have a day to spare our recommendation is if you don't have a day to spare stay two days like we did focus on the other sites that are more worthwhile now if you have an extra day a spare in your calendar go because it's worth it it's a very beautiful tour it's something different you can buy some souvenirs if you'd like and it's also a beautiful place to see and for those who are also interested in shopping, even though it's a small and different city, there are many famous stores. These brand stores that we always look for, that are many in Italy, they are very fond of this world of fashion. There are all the stores that are the cheaper stores for those who want to buy clothes, bags, glasses for a good price. And there are also the designer stores that the Italians like a lot. It's very cultural there, this high class store. So you will find it a lot. There are many streets so you can find the one you like the most, put it on the map, you can visualize where the closest stores are because there are about four or five streets that are full of stores and they are all in this tourist area so it will be very easy for you to find Oh, and this is an important tip. To get around Venice, you need your cell phone. Actually, anywhere in the world, you need a cell phone. But in Venice, it's even more important. So don't forget to have the internet working. Our tip is always buy a prepaid international SIM card beforehand in your country. It's much more worthwhile. If you go abroad with your national carrier's plan and use it, it will be a fortune. You will activate the international roaming and the cost is very high. What we always do, which is the cheapest, easiest, and most practical, is to buy an international SIM card. Sometimes it's sold in another country but sometimes there may be companies that sell it in your country there are some very good ones i'll leave the link in the description of the video along with the others we bought it and in a few days it arrived at our house when we got there we got off the plane in italy put it on and went out using the internet on your cell phone it helps a lot especially in venice to locate yourself to know how to get back to the hotel to get to the sites because you can be sure once or twice during your trip you are going to get lost and here below I'll leave all the links okay guys that we use there to organize our trips and the links that we mentioned there there is also the travel insurance don't forget that's mandatory right travel insurance is mandatory to entering almost all countries in Europe including Italy so do it it's very cheap the requirement they have from the European treaty is that you need to have medical uh, insurance with a medical assistance of at least 30,000 euros to make an insurance with this assistance you will spend 22 euros so it's very cheap compared to all that it offers even if it were not mandatory we recommend that you take it because travel insurance is very good and covers you for any loss that you might have abroad and there is a price comparator that i'll leave here that's sensational it compares in all insurance companies and offers you the best prices you guarantee the best insurance and the best price and save a lot and there is also a comparator that works the same way as this one but for car rental it's the biggest in the world and it's sensational if you're planning your trip to italy check out this comparator that helps you save a lot and also watch our videos of the perfect italy tour and the perfect Tuscany tour which are very nice as well and that's it guys i hope you liked the video if you like it please give us a like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot and don't forget to watch also the video on how to save a lot on your trip to italy it's a complete step-by-step -step guide that we created for you to plan your entire trip to italy from start to finish making all the reservations saving a lot on everything hiring the best services and with all the tips you need it's a complete step-by-step -step. i'll leave it here below the playlist that has all the other videos from italy for you to watch and that's it guys i hope Hope you like it to the video and have nice trips.